All right, everyone. Uh, welcome to the first lab online for Bio 139 this semester. Uh, this is going to be a walkthrough of the blood typing activity, and I've got some of it set up right here. And also, we're going to be beginning with this part of the lab. I'm going to walk through uh, what you should have on this table, and then we're going to move on and actually do the blood typing activity. So on this table, uh, this is asking us, with someone with blood type whatever, what antigens does this person have and what antibodies would this person have? And we're going to talk about this a little bit in lecture, but I do want to talk about it a little bit in lab also. So antigens are proteins on someone's erythrocytes that determine what blood type they have. Antibodies are proteins in the person's plasma, and the way antibodies work is they are shaped to fit things that should not be in the person's body. So antigen and antibody should never be the same. Otherwise, you get clumping and something called uh, hemolysis or hemolysis, which is actually how uh, red blood cells are broken down uh, because your body thinks that it is something foreign. So we never want antigen and antibody to be the same. Otherwise, you get clumping and hemolysis. So let's see, if someone is blood type A, now this is not talking about positive, negative. It's, it's ignoring that part for right now. We're just talking about the ABO blood system at first. If someone is blood type A, then on the surface of their erythrocytes, their red blood cells, they have antigen A. So antigen is the blood type. Blood type A has A antigens. The antibody is going to look for the antigen that should not be there. So the antibody would be anti-B antibodies. Someone with blood type A has A antigens on their erythrocytes and anti-B antibodies in their plasma. Someone with blood type B has B antigens on their erythrocytes and anti-A antibodies in their plasma. Someone with blood type AB, this does not mean they have an antigen called AB. This just means they have both the A antigen and the B antigen on their erythrocytes, but they don't have any uh, antibodies because neither A nor B antigens would be out of place. So antibodies, we would say none. Someone with blood type O. Well, O is actually a little bit interesting because originally that was a zero because what this means is the person has zero antigens. They don't have any antigens on their erythrocytes. So there is no blood type. But instead of saying zero, since everything else was a letter, it just got called type O. And someone with blood type O has no antigens on their erythrocytes. But they would have two types of antibodies. They would have anti-A antibodies and anti-B antibodies. Now we're going to ignore the ABO system and talk about RH factor. And this is that positive and negative that you're familiar with. Someone with RH positive blood, that just means they have the RH factor, which is an antigen, on their erythrocyte. So RH positive has the RH antigen on their erythrocyte, and they would not have an antibody. Someone with RH negative blood, the negative just means that it's not there. The positive meant that it was there. The negative means that it's not. So RH negative, they have no antigen. 
and the antibody would be anti-RH antibody in their plasma. And that's because they should not ever have RH positive blood. The anti-RH antibody looks for any RH antigens because they shouldn't be there. All right, now there's a little bit more to it than that with RH, we'll talk about it in lecture, so be sure and watch that video. There's some stuff here that you should know. We should know the regular uh, blood counts, the normal blood counts. And you should be able to define these uh, terms, which are disorders associated with blood counts. So you can find those either in your textbook or online. But what we're going to do next is actually do this activity. We're going to take four sets of blood that we don't know what type of blood it is, and we're going to figure it out, okay? And we're gonna fill this chart out. Now, I'm not gonna give you the answers. You're gonna to have to figure out what blood type they have based on what we see in our activity today. So here, I've got four blood wells, and I've got them labeled with the fake blood. Uh, the first is Mr. Smith. Next is Mr. Jones. Then we have Mr. Green. And last we have Miss Brown. So those are the four unknown blood samples that we have, and we want to figure out what blood type they have. The way that we do that is we have these wells, and in each of the wells, I'm going to put a couple of drops of the blood. So in Mr. Smith, I'm going to put a couple of drops of blood into all three wells. The same blood in all three wells. I'm going to do the same thing for Mr. Jones, Mr. Green, and Miss Brown. But I've also got these other uh, kind of colorful samples back here, and these are simulated antibodies. I've got anti-A antibodies, anti-B antibodies, and anti-RH antibodies. And we're gonna mix those together. I'm gonna to put the anti-A antibodies into this first well that says A, and I'm gonna do that for all of them. Then I'm gonna put the anti-B antibodies into the well that says B. Now that might be a little bit hard to see, I'm not sure, but you can see A, B, RH. And I'm going to do that same thing for the A, the B, and the RH. And then I'm going to let them sit and see what happens. All right, so let's go ahead and do this for Mr. Smith. Put a couple of drops into each well. All right, and then I'm going to do the same thing for Mr. Jones. I'm going to pause the video because the Mr. Jones seems to be a little clogged up. All right, well, let's try that again. Mr. Jones, a couple of drops in each well. Do the same thing with Mr. Green, a couple of drops in each well. And then Miss Brown, a couple of drops in each well. Next, what I'm going to do is put some of these antibodies into each well. So I'm going to begin with the anti-A antibodies, and I'm going to put a couple of drops into Mr. Smith, a couple of drops into Mr. Jones, a couple of drops into Mr. Green, and a couple of drops into Miss Brown. Then I'm going to do the same thing with the anti B. And finally, the same thing with the anti RH.
And I'm gonna take a toothpick and make sure everything's mixed. Now it's important to use a different end of the toothpick for every well. You don't want to cross contaminate. So I have quite a few toothpicks here that I'm going through. Alright, so everything is mixed, and now this actually can take a couple of minutes before we see anything, so I'm going to pause the video, I'm not going to touch anything, I'm just going to put the caps back on the reagents, but I'm going to pause the video and then we will come back and look to see each of these people, what happened in each of the wells and figure out what that means. All right, now it's been about four or five minutes, and really the longer you let this sit, the stronger reactions you will see, but there are enough now that we will be able to see them in this video, and I've got the light on the camera now, so hopefully you'll be able to see everything a little bit better. So first we're gonna look at Mr. Smith and see what happens. Well, hopefully you can see it, but I'm gonna shake it a little bit, and you can see there's not really a lot going on in the B well. But if we look at the A and the RH wells, they kind of look almost like there's hair or almost like uh, jello or something happening here. The B well is still very liquid. The A and the RH well have thickened up quite a bit. And that thickening is called agglutination. So if we go back to here and we look at Mr. Smith in the anti-A, I would put there was clumping. In the anti-B, there was no clumping. In the anti-RH, there was clumping. So think about what blood type that would mean this person has. And what antigens would this person have based on that blood type? What antibodies would this person have based on that blood type? This is not asking what antibodies I put in. This is asking, once you know this person's blood type, what antigens would they have? What antibodies would they have? So I'm going to go ahead and tell you for Mr. Smith, but Mr. Jo or Miss Jones, Green, and brown, I'm not going to tell you the answers. So, Mr. Smith, there is clumping in the A well and the RH well. Clumping means that they have those antigens because I put the antibodies in. So if he has A antigens and he has RH antigens, what would that blood type be? That would be blood type A positive. This person has A positive blood. And if they have A positive blood, that tells me he has A antigens and the RH antigen or RH factor. The antibodies, well, he should not ever have B antigen. So he would have anti-B antibodies. All right, now I'm gonna go through the next three, but I'm not gonna tell you their blood type. So if we come back over here, now we're looking at Jones, uh, Mr. Jones, Miss Jones, whatever it happens to be. If we look here at the well, the A and the RH are still very liquidy, but the B has clumped. It has agglutinated. So there's clumping in B, but not in A and not in RH. Moving along to green. Green, there is clumping in, uh, it looks like, 
all three wells. It looks like all three wells have clumped. So there's clumping in A, there's clumping in B, and there's clumping in RH. And brown, they all three look pretty liquidy. So there is no clumping in any of the wells for brown. No clumping in A, no clumping in B, and no clumping in RH. So based on that, where there was clumping and where there's not, you should be able to tell me what blood types this person has. All right. Just to go through the rest of the lab here. Fetal pig. I've already posted the video for fetal pig, so you should watch that. Blood vessel man. I'm not posting a video for that. You should be able to label this blood vessel man for these veins and these arteries on the blood vessel man. Now there's a key down here to tell you if you got them right or not, but you do need to be able to have those filled out. I'm not gonna take them up. You don't have to turn them in. They're not for a grade. Again, same thing here for the Atlay neck model. Here's the key and here is the neck model. You should be able to identify all of those structures listed. And a case study. So the case study, I'm not going to go over it. You should be able to answer these with critical thinking. But if there are any of them that you're not sure about, you can always email or text to ask me. All right, and that's the end of this week's or this first lab of the semester. All right, I will see you again soon.